Hi, I'm Lisa Renee, your Ascension Guide, and I am here today with the Energetics and this is panel. We have Joni, Robin, and Yvonne, all HGS stewards, and we'd like to talk today about archetypes of drama and how they impact our life and how they're a part of the collective consciousness. A lot of our goal within our spiritual practice is to release ourselves from identities of who we think we are. And this is what we mean when we say archetypes of drama. In the collective consciousness, there are blueprints of which all of the human race is a part. And these particular blueprints of identity are called archetypes. Many times as we become governed by our mental body or at the lower levels we call this the negative ego construct, the negative ego consciousness, we will over identify ourselves with certain archetypes and we will believe these archetypes to be an intrinsic part of our identity and at certain times in our development if we over identify with these archetypes they can stunt our spiritual growth they can increase limitations in our ability to expand on the spiritual path. A part of the collective consciousness when we understand the global brain of planet Earth as a part of collective human consciousness, the global brain of planet Earth contains a blueprint of collective consciousness archetypes of which we are all a part so when we talk about roles, archetypes, and identities, all of these are intermingled and interwoven with who we believe we are. And this is definitely a very complex science, but understanding more about the self-knowledge on the spiritual path to understand what identities we connect to or are a part of our own creative essence as we know ourselves deeper and better, we can transcend the negative polarities of archetypes so that we become merged with the spiritual source light, which is free of archetypes and therefore free of mind control. On planet Earth, with the various agendas of control and consciousness suppression, one of the means of mind control is through the use of archetypes in the collective consciousness. So being aware of this mind control being perpetrated through archetypes is very supportive and helpful in learning how to release yourself from the connections of mind control or other types of negative programs that may be suppressing your life force or creating obstacles in your spiritual growth and your emotional development. So some of the collective mind archetypes that I'd like to bring up for today and certainly one that is very prevalent on our planet is the tyrant archetype. The tyrant archetype is the archetype of control, of destroyer, of king, false king of tyranny. So these various archetypes, bless you, are used to create or assert control over the collective consciousness. Some of these influences happen in the now and present self, meaning the now self that we are will have a connection to an archetype or other selves, other lifetimes. We have many identities we have had on the soul plane or the oversoul plane, which also may be connected to an archetype. So as we develop on the spiritual path, we will find ourselves addressing archetypes and clearing these archetypal identities and their energetic influences from impacting our consciousness and our spiritual growth in negative ways. So understanding more about archetypes is very helpful on the spiritual growth process, the spiritual ascension pathway. Some of these collective consciousness influences are inorganic because they have been placed as mind control. But for a moment, let's review some common archetypes in the collective consciousness influences, which is similar to saying 
archetypes that are used in the planetary brain in order to influence certain behaviors, attitudes, and belief systems that become drilled down into the human ego system, not ecosystem, but ego system, <laughs> so that we believe we are these identities when in actuality we are multidimensional, God sovereign free beings. So we have to transcend these archetypes, come in neutrality with these archetypes, learn how to synthesize them so that our spirit becomes the governing force of our vehicle, the spirit becomes the governing force of our mind, and the spirit becomes the governing force of our emotional state and therefore our heart. So to clear these identities allows the pathway of spirit to embody in your being so you become a soul-infused personality that is free of the mind control of archetypes of drama upon your life. Some of these archetypes are the destroyer archetype, very similar with tyrant. This is the archetype of the devil, the enemy patterning, so the enemy, the betrayer, the evildoer, the dominator, the murderer, the raper, the despot, the tyrant and the warmonger. These are very prevalent on our planet today because we are merging into a new eon through the end of the ascension cycle. We are leaving patriarchal domination and coming into the axis of the feminine principle to bring balance and unification between the masculine and feminine principles. So we will see the destroyer archetype, the tyrant archetype being released as we shift from patriarchal domination and into balance with the spiritual principle of the feminine. The fool archetype, the innocent archetype, the magician archetype, the martyr archetype, the patriarch or matriarch archetype, the seducer archetype, which is another one that is used a lot to control the second chakra and to create addiction in the human race. It is the seducer archetype that is used to elicit that kind of control on the human being. Also, seeker archetype, the servant archetype, the warrior archetype, and the wise one archetype. Now, all of us have access to these archetypes, but the clue in spiritual practice is to disidentify as an identity being the main source of your sense of self. And so I'd like to ask our panel, in talking about the archetypes in your particular insights and thoughts as well, in clearing these ego identities from your ability to access higher consciousness and connect with your spirit, I've had so much exposure to these archetypes in other modalities in past years where, where really even in groups being encouraged to identify with an archetype and saying, yeah, that's my archetype, you know, I'm, I'm you know, like that nubile or innocent or this. And what I love about this work is recognizing, yeah, that all of these archetypes are present and influencing me in different ways, maybe, exercising different kinds of influence and that as I work to clear them and working with the HGS, it's always interesting which one might come up and say, oh, I feel that. And yeah, that's, that's something that's influencing me. And I don't really want that influencing me any way that I don't mm -hmm. choose. And seeing how there's a fluidity and how then it'll show me some lesson that I need to learn from it. Oh, I've been expressing that. And wow, that doesn't even, I don't even really want to express that. Okay, mm. can move that out and have yeah. more freedom. Yes. I think that um, identifying archetypes um, is a very um, personal thing, of course, but um, l understanding the subsets of what that is with your expression of who you are. So are you the corporate executive archetype or are you the mother archetype? I mean, and then understand... Yeah. Yeah what that means for you and I like your analogy of being a computer and then understanding what program it's running yes. with that archetype mm, yes. and then being able to recognize it and see how it influences your life and right. other people around you. Right, exactly. Mm. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's so um, it's such a powerful um, thing to to come up against and to deal with and to to learn from. And in my own personal experience, I'll use my mother, um, who came in, you know, with a very heavy contract, but very much of it was the martyr. And having grown up with that, um, it was someone who had an insane um, compassion for all the hells that plagues humanity, and that was part of her contract. But it, she comes from a lineage of this, you know, it was the freedom fighters and you give of yourself until you have nothing left and you, you're next, you know. And so coming into this incredible line, this female lineage of this archetype, um, I'm so grateful for the context now because that is absolutely something that I've had to fight in my, in, you know, in my life, that that is not my archetype. You know, that it's, it's not genetic, it is not in here, it's not who I am. And, and you know, definitely when I was younger, you, you want to get right in there. It's very strong, you know, if you're raised with it and it's there. And that was a, um, that battle with, well, how can you be compassionate human being and, and not be a martyr, you know? Um, and so much of this path is about understand. And again, it goes back to what we've talked about before in self worth, is understanding that you don't have to give 150 percent so you have nothing left for yourself, because you're really not accomplishing anything. And a lot of these archetypes are really have been created to just drain us, deplete us, you know, of all that is rightfully ours. And so it's interesting whether it's in your family or around you. It's great to see them and recognize them because then you really can pull away from it and, and kind of grow past it. Well, one thing that is certain is that when we are over-identified with an archetype and it becomes a type of governor totally. upon our consciousness, is that generally that being will descend into a controlling behavior. Mm -hmm. And when we become controlling, we become a manipulator, and right. many times we start to manipulate others and the environment to ensure that our archetype mm -hmm. is able to be expressed. And this mm -hmm. is when it can right. become derogatory or harmful to others around us, mm -hmm. because we then start to exert our controller mechanism upon others around us by superimposing our belief superimposing our energy, uh, our will. So many different levels of superimposition happen when we are over-identified with an archetype. So this is why it's very clear that in the earlier stages of spiritual development, learning archetypes is very helpful because it gives you insight to self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. And these types of archetypes could also extend, obviously, into astrological configurations, our birth date, uh, into numerological foundations. These all are archetypes as well that interact as a blueprint of consciousness. So studying those archetypes is really studying yourself mm -hmm. and being able to really gain the knowledge of the self so that you can come into the wisdom of applying higher consciousness to all things that you involve yourself in your day-to-day -day life. Because the last thing we really want to do is attempt to exert control over the environment. As we do so, if we come into manipulation or control of the environment, we start to become parasitic or vampiric to others. And many of us know what it's like to be in the presence of an emotional or mental vampire. Right? So when we're attempting to control the reality and control others, we start to become vampiric and parasitic because we need, we are attached to the external representation of something. So in the earlier stages, again, learning and developing your skill with recognizing archetypes can be very powerful in the spiritual discovery and exploration process. And as we develop on the spiritual path, we want to choose to see archetypes from a place of wisdom and observer as literally a player on a screen, as if you're watching a movie, and you can identify and observe these archetypes from discernment and non-judgment. 
and make a choice in the moment to disengage from these particular dramas that are generally at play between the archetypes. So as we choose more peace in our heart, more peace in our life, more peace through the spiritual development process, we will want to disengage from archetypes of drama in controlling, manipulating, or exerting influence upon our day-to-day life. So again, I hope this has been helpful in today's discussion of archetypes of drama. We leave you with this thought. In much love and gratitude for you joining us today. Thank you so much.